The Adeptus Astartes are more commonly referred to as space marines. They are often referred to as the God Emperor's Angels of Death, and this description is well earned. The creator of the Space Marine Project is none other than the God Emperor. The Emperor describes the Space Marines the following way, They shall be my finest warriors, these men who give of themselves to me. Like clay I shall mould them, and in the furnace of war one shall forge them. They shall be of iron will and steely sinew. In great armour I shall clad them, and with the mightiest weapons shall they be armed. They will be untouched by plague or disease, no sickness shall blight them. They shall have such tactics, strategies and machines that no foe will best them in battle. They are my bulwark against the terror. They are the defenders of humanity. They are my space marines and they shall know no fear. But how are these legendary warriors made? This question is the basis for this video, and I will describe the many steps that go into making an ordinary man into a superhuman killing machine. Firstly, not everybody can become a space marine. The subject must be male and be reasonably young. In general, the subjects must be in prime physical condition. The subjects also tend to be the best warriors from their selected planets. Death Worlds often produces the best recruits since the planets weed out the weak naturally due to harsh living conditions, and living is a constant struggle. There are also usually some intangible qualities that are needed, like leadership, integrity, will and wisdom, but what qualities each legion wants vary from legion to legion. The Iron Fist and the Ultramarines legion value the already highlighted qualities. The Night Lords, for instance, are often recruited from criminals, which lends itself to their preferred combat tactic of instilling fear. The Salamander's legion, on the other hand, values kindness, compassion and self-sacrifice. If a person is selected to become a space marine, a grueling 19-phase process of implants awaits them. Phase 1. Secondary heart enhances circulation and survival capabilities by adding a backup heart, enabling space marines to endure low oxygen levels and severe injuries by either boosting blood flow or substituting the primary heart's functions. Phase 2. Osmodula strengthens the skeleton by promoting the integration of ceramic base minerals into the bone, leading to denser and more resilient bone structures. This not only enlarges the marine skeleton, but also encases vital organs in a protective layer of reinforced bone. Phase 3. Biscopia located in the chest. This organ significantly accelerates muscle growth across the marine's body by secreting specialized hormones, contributing to their superhuman strength. These phases collectively lay the groundwork for transforming recruits into warriors capable of surviving the universe's most hostile environments, rendering space marines larger, stronger, and more durable than any regular human soldier. Phases 4 Hamestaman This organ is implanted into a major blood vessel and has dual functions. It helps regulate the effects of the phase 2 and 3 implants on the marine's body, ensuring the modified skeletal and muscular systems function correctly. Additionally, it alters the composition of the marine's blood, making it more effective at supporting the body's enhanced physiological demands. Phase 5 Laramans organ a liver-sized, dark, fleshy organ implanted in the chest cavity. It produces Laraman cells, which are released into the bloodstream in response to injury. These cells rapidly clot blood and form scar tissue over wounds, significantly accelerating the healing process and preventing blood loss. These implants further enhance the Space Marines' superhuman capabilities, ensuring not only their survivability in combat through rapid wound healing, but also the optimal performance of their enhanced bodies. Phase 6 of Space Marine Augmentation introduces the Catalepsan Node, a unique brain implant designed to manipulate sleep patterns and enhance battlefield endurance. Implanted into the skull, this organ allows space marines to partially sleep by shutting down parts of their brain sequentially, enabling them to remain alert and aware of their surroundings even during rest. This adaptation doesn't replace the need for traditional sleep, but significantly boosts a marine's survivability by allowing them to rest without becoming vulnerable to enemy attacks. Phase 7 Preomnor, a predigestive stomach that enables space marines to consume a variety of otherwise poisonous or indigestible substances. It assesses and neutralizes potential poisons, allowing marines to eat virtually anything without harm. 
Phase 8 omophagia is situated within the spinal cord. This implant allows marines to absorb genetic material from consumed tissue, granting them the creature's memories or experiences. This unique trait aids in survival and learning in alien environments and is the basis for the flesh-eating and blood-drinking rituals of many chapters. Phase 9 multi-lung and additional lung that enables marines to breathe in toxic or poorly oxygenated atmospheres without damage. It features a protective mechanism to close off the normal respiratory pathway in harmful environments, showcasing a space marine's ability to operate in almost any condition. These implants significantly enhance a space marine's operational capabilities, allowing them to survive and adapt in hostile environments and even gain knowledge through the consumption of biomaterial. Phases 10 and 11 of Space Marine Augmentation focus on enhancing sensory capabilities. Phase 10 oculoba specialized organ that enables Space Marine's eyes to respond to optic therapy, significantly improving their eyesight beyond human capabilities. It allows for adjustments to the eye's growth patterns and light receptive cells granting Marine's exceptional vision, including the ability to see almost as well in low light as in daylight. Phase 11 Lyman's ear, this implant enhances auditory functions, allowing marines to selectively filter and enhance sounds. It protects them from disorientation and nausea caused by extreme spins or movements, thus maintaining their combat effectiveness in chaotic environments. The organ makes no visible change to the marine's appearance, keeping their enhanced hearing capabilities discreet. Together, these phases significantly enhance a space marine's sensory perception allowing them to operate effectively in a wide range of combat scenarios. Phases 12 and 13 of Space Marine Augmentation provide critical survival and adaptive capabilities. Phase 12 sees and membrane this implant allows Space Marines to enter a state of suspended animation, either as a conscious decision or automatically in response to extreme physical trauma. In this state, Marines can survive potentially fatal injuries for many years, requiring specific chemical therapy and auto-suggestion techniques for revival. The longest recorded period of deanimation, followed by successful reanimation, is 567 years. Phase 13 Melanochrome This organ monitors radiation levels and adjusts the marine skin pigmentation to protect against ultraviolet and other forms of radiation. The variations in the melanochrome gene seed across different chapters can lead to distinctive skin and hair coloration among the marines, including the uniform appearance of certain chapters, like the albino warriors of the death spectres. These enhancements enable space marines to survive in environments that would be instantly lethal to normal humans and to endure long periods of inactivity or exposure without sustaining permanent harm. Phases 14 and 15 of Space Marine Augmentation focus on enhancing the circulatory and sensory systems for survival in hostile environments. Phase 14 Oolitic Kidney This heart-shaped organ improves the marine circulatory system and enables other implants to function effectively. It filters blood extremely efficiently, allowing the marine to survive poisons and gases that the multi-lung cannot handle by itself. The Oolitic Kidney works in conjunction with the secondary heart to detoxify the marine's blood rapidly, rendering the marine unconscious during the process as the blood is circulated at high speed. Phase 15 Neuroglottis situated in the back of the mouth, this organ allows marines to taste and thereby assess the edibility of potential food sources. It can detect a wide range of natural poisons, certain chemicals, and even the distinctive odors of some creatures. This capability also grants marines a rudimentary form of tracking by taste, enabling them to follow targets or identify environmental hazards based on the chemical composition of what they can taste. These implants significantly enhance a space marine's adaptability, allowing them to survive in environments where resources are scarce or poisoned, and to identify threats or track enemies through taste. Phases 15 to 19 of Space Marine Augmentation focus on a range of enhancements, from environmental adaptability to the crucial integration with their power armor. Phase 15 Neuroglottis enhances a marine's sense of taste to detect poisons, assess the edibility of materials, and even track by taste. It's implanted in the back of the mouth, allowing marines to discern a broad spectrum of natural poisons and chemicals. Phase 16 Mucrinoid implanted in the lower intestine, 
this organ modifies the marine sweat glands. Upon activation by chemotherapy, it secretates a protective oily substance over the skin, safeguarding against extreme temperatures and vacuum conditions. Phase 17 Betcher's gland, located near the salivary glands, or the hard palate, it allows marines to produce a blinding and corrosive poison, which can be spit at enemies. This adaptation also grants immunity to the poison for the marine itself. Phase 18 Progenoids 2 glands, one in the neck and another in the chest, that are vital for the chapter's continuation. They absorb genetic material from other implants, maturing into gene seeds that can be harvested and used to create new marines. Phase 19 Black Carapace the final implant, a layer of black plastic-like material grown and then implanted under the skin of the torso. It hardens and integrates with the marine's nervous system, allowing direct neural control of their power armor. This implant is critical for the full functionality of a space marine's armor, providing interface points for neural control, medical monitoring, and armor maintenance. These phases collectively ensure that space marines are not only supremely adapted to warfare, both in terms of biological weaponry and defense, but are also integral to the regeneration and operational capability of their chapters through the creation of new marines and the effective use of their iconic power armor. As you can see, the process is extensive and few survive it, but those that do are transformed from ordinary humans to seven foot tall killing machines and in time will continue the legacy of the God Emperor's Angels of Death. Thank you for watching the video. Feel free to like, subscribe to, and comment on it. As I'm new to YouTube and lore videos, your feedback is greatly appreciated.